Today, we're going to modify a car alternator to produce 120 volt AC, that's alternating current, without using a step-up transformer. With 120 volt AC, this car alternator usability is limitless. It can provide the energy to light up the house and run power tools, just to name a few. This is a refurbished car alternator that can produce a maximum of 55 amps. And we're gonna tear it apart and modify it. This particular stator winding has six loops of copper wire. And we're gonna multiply the loops of copper wire by 10. So we're gonna have 60 loops. The formula to produce 120 volt AC in a magnetic field is very complicated. So I kept it simple. If six loops of copper wire can produce 12 volt, why not multiply it by 10 to get 120 volts? I took the stator core outside to give it a little wash. Here I trace a stator core on a piece of paper. So it's easier for me to count how many nodes I need to create. And there are 14 nodes. The distance between the loop spacing is about 3 quarter of an inch. I'm using a similar stator coil winding to measure the height of the coil. I transfer the dimensions onto a piece of 2x4. So I can build a template for the new stator coil. Here I use a piece of copper wire to build the template. And there should be 14 notes total. And I stretch out the copper wire to find out the linear length of the wire. Then I use two nails as my markers.
Each color represents one coil of copper. Each coil has two ends. So we got the red, the white, and the black. I've removed the internal voltage regulator and the diode circuits. And what we have left are just the two contact for the rotor slip rings. To hold the brushes in place, I use a piece of copper wire. Starting from the left side of the screen, we got a 12 volt, 7 amp hour lead acid battery. And then we have a 30 ohm rheostat. Next to it is a 12 volt DC motor. Then we have our exciting and newly modified car alternator. Here we got the stator wires connected in series. The original stator wire was a star configuration. Then we modify it into a series configuration. This red wire is connected to the rotor positive brush. And the green wire is the ground connection for the rotor. The red wire goes to the one side of the rheostat. And this black wire goes to the negative side of the motor. I typically would put a switch on the positive side of the motor, but for color coordination purposes, we'll put it on the negative side this time. And this red cable goes to the positive side of the motor and straight to the battery. And we'll connect the other side of the rheostat to the battery when we're ready to use it. Okay, here's a summary. The red and the black wire are the AC output of the alternator. And this red wire is the pasta brush of the rotor. And the current for the rotor will be controlled by this rheostat. And the rheostat gets its power directly from the 12 volt battery. And the green wire is the negative or the ground side for the rotor. And we'll connect a multimeter and let's do some demonstration. I'll let you watch and let you listen to the sounds of the system.